Tailwind has just announced Tailwind version 4, and the alpha version is available for everyone to try on GitHub. And guess what? I know you can read, so I'm not going to read you the blog post. I'm actually going to write some code today. Let's do it. Okay, so what we have here is a fresh React Vite app, and all I've really installed is the Tailwind CSS Vite plugin version 4 alpha, as well as the Tailwind CSS library itself version 4 alpha. Here I have in my app.tsx, I have some HTML code with some Tailwind classes, and as you can see, it does not look good. And here is how we import Tailwind CSS in version 4. It's very, very easy. I'm using Vit for this example, so all I need to do is import the Tailwind CSS Vit plugin and add it to the plugins array. Then I'm going to head over to my index.css file and simply type in import Tailwind CSS. And it just works. One of the main things that Tailwind team wanted to achieve with version 4 is for Tailwind to feel more like a CSS native thing rather than a JavaScript library. And I think so far it's working great. Let's continue. What if I want to define some CSS variables? Previously, for this to work, I would have to head over to my tailwind.config.js file and I'm going to have to mess with some either JSON or a JavaScript object, add the variables there, then add them in my CSS files, and only then they would work. With Tailwind 4, this is really, really easy. All I need to do is go over to my index.css file and create a theme block. And let's say I want to add a new color to my palette, and I'm going to call it Grumpy. It's a very grumpy looking color. That's all I have to do for it to be recognized by Tailwind. So I'm going to head over to my app.tsx file. I'm going to swap all of the slates to grumpy. And there you go. There is no need for any Tailwind configuration file. And I think that's very nice. Now, what if I want to add a new variable for, say, a text size? So I can say font size uh, 6xl for rem. And now I can use it just like that. Super, super easy. Well done, Tailwind. Another amazing addition to Tailwind version 4 is the ability to easily compose together variants that act on other selectors in a very natural way. We all know groups, right? So let's take a look. So imagine I have this input field here and I want to conditionally be able to apply classes to it depending on some state or pseudo classes coming from this div right here. So what I'm going to be able to do then is define this one as a group. In the previous version of Tailwind, what I would have to then do is group has hover opacity zero. And then whenever I would hover over the group, the opacity would go to zero. This is very hard to read, very hard to write. It's not great. And fun fact, every single potential combination was explicitly hard coded in the Tailwind CSS framework. With Tailwind version four, this gets so much better. All I have to do is say group has hover opacity zero. That's it. As soon as I hover over the group, the input disappears. This is so much more readable. Now, the cool thing is that this is infinitely scalable. You can add more and more and more rules. So you could say group has hover, has active, and add more and more, and it would still work and still very easy to read. This is great. So everything we just saw is thanks to the new Tailwind 4 engine built from scratch from the ground up for version 4. The Tailwind team also claims that Tailwind version 4 is up to 10 times faster than the previous version. And that's thanks to Rust. So the team has incorporated Rust in some parts of Tailwind. Now, this is something we've seen happening a lot lately. We've seen this with Next.js. In, I think, Next.js 13, they have rewritten the entire build system to use Rust. They have used this in Turbo Repo. They essentially took Webpack plugins and rewrote them in Rust. And it's very clear that Rust helps you achieve a lot of speed gains. So that's pretty neat. As long as we developers don't have to do anything and it just works, why not? And folks, here's a small reminder. If you're watching till here, you probably like the content. And that means you might want to see more. And there is a great way to do that. There is this subscribe button. And if you use that, you are going to get more of my videos on your feed. All right. Let's continue. So a few important things about Tailwind version 4. The first thing is that you saw me using Vite. Currently, in the alpha version of Tailwind 4, you can use Vite with the Tailwind CSS plugin. You could use Post CSS with the Tailwind plugin. And you could use the Tailwind CLI. And they also want to add support for other bundlers as well. So I imagine we're going to see Webpack. I imagine we're going to see Rollup as well. The Tailwind team also said that they are going to add backwards compatibility for projects using the Tailwind config.js file. 
So that's pretty neat. And with that being said, they also said that there are going to be some breaking changes as well. So if you want to learn more about breaking changes, the roadmap, upcoming features, and maybe even see some more code examples, because there is definitely more coming with Tailwind version 4 that you might want to know about, check out the official blog post. It's in the description down below, and the Tailwind team has done an amazing job, so do check it out. And finally, remember, it's still in alpha, so be cautious when using this. All right, folks, it's my pleasure to have you watching until the very end. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.